I farm at uh, Rawston Farm with my daughter Georgina. Um, the farm size were about 960 hectares, some of its own, some's tenanted and some's done on various contract arrangements. Uh, within the business we have 320 milking cows in, in two herds, also another sort of 300 or so beef animals and followers for the dairy herd. We also grow combinable crops, there's about 650 hectares combinable crops growing winter wheat, uh, winter barley, spring barley, oil seeds. We also grow obviously quite a lot of temporary grass for the, for the dairy cows. Also there's about uh, 40 hectares of maize and this year as a bit of a trial we're growing some soya. About 25 years ago my wife and I decided to buy the local pub. We decided also to run our own butchery so the beef animals from the farm go to a local abattoir and then come back to the butchery. More recently we've decided to open a little farm shop promoting local foods and that and that's Becoming more and more popular is hard work, but we think promoting food is, is sort of the way forward. So I work with my dad. I do a lot of calf rearing, uh, drive the combine in the summer months, and just basically help dad in sort of overseeing the sort of management of the farm. She loves animals and she's willing to give anything a go. She's very good in the office and, and the sort of modern technology. She can more easily grasp it than, than I can and, and she's, a, she's a great support to me. I really admire my dad. He is an incredible farmer. He's so dedicated to the farm. I've got such big boots to fill and I've told him he's not allowed to retire yet because I'm not ready. I've got too much to learn from him. We dealt with Frontier for a, a number of years and more recently we've had uh, Russell Dean as our agronomist. He's become a family friend and he, he understands our business. He understands what, what we're trying to achieve and, and our objectives and he, he's a, a great guy to work with. James and I have a close working relationship. Um, we've worked together for 15 years. It's really good. We keep in regular contact. We probably speak at least two or three times a week uh, and a bit more in the, in the busy spring period and, and during harvest. I do three main roles on the farm. So the first of all, I look after all of his crop protection. So I walk his crops, I advise him on what crop protection to apply, and then I'm also responsible for getting it ordered and getting it here on time. My second role is involved with crop nutrition. So I advise James on what fertiliser to apply. I'm also responsible for ordering the fertiliser and trying to get the right price for James. And my third role on, on the farm is I'm responsible for all of the cereal seed and the rape seed that comes onto the farm. So I work with James on what he wants to grow and then I order the seed and then make sure we've got it here when he needs it. Every day on this farm it is different and you start off with the best plan in the world and occasionally it doesn't quite go to plan. But my first port of call is to check that all the herdsmen are happy and all the cows have been fed, milk, etc. and they've got no issues. Busy calving times, you know, we, we are sort of flat out helping them. And meanwhile in the background, of course the crops are growing, the crops need to be sown and we need someone to sort of monitor them, check for disease, weeds, etc. And this is where, where Russell comes in and, and he will walk the crops, you know, and we'll discuss what treatments are needed and, and he's a, he provides a great backup. But the challenge here is that we've got a mixed farm. So we end up with complications around livestock and muck being applied and the rotation has to fit in around the livestock enterprises. Russell Dean is great. We're not an intensive arable farm, nor are we extensive. We just want to produce top quality at a reasonable profit margin and he's totally on board with that and he gets that ethos and so I think as a result we have a really good working relationship because he's able to cater to our needs and so I think that's why it works really well. We also um, sell quite a lot of our combinable crops through Frontier and using Rachel planting and we've done business with her for many many years and, and you build up a sort of good trusted relationship with, with both of them and I always feel they're you know, they're looking after you, they're looking after your business and trying to do the best for you. So my main role with James is I'm looking to purchase grain from him um, and also I see myself in an advisory capacity um, and giving James lots of information about markets, uh, what the market's requiring from him and I also use Russell to help me decide on uh, what varieties James should be growing and whether they're going to suit the marketplace that um, we have available for the produce that he has. 
We have a relationship where I don't need to bombard him with information. I just feed him what I think is appropriate. It's just as important to be telling someone what they perhaps shouldn't do as well as what they should be doing. And by doing that, the trust is built because they feel that your view is balanced rather than just pushing them down one route, basically. We really like marketing our grain with Frontier. They're very efficient, always at the end of the phone. Frontier have some fantastic customers that want to buy big loads of grain and so we can't accommodate for all of that and so they just ring us up and offer us the price and do we want to sell, don't we? Despite them being a huge firm, they are actually really focused on us as a local business and they're really involved in the local community as well as the fact that they're strong enough to hold their own within the competitive marketplace and, and hold some good customers. If we do a good job for James and we work closely together, he's more inclined to do more business and also he then looks outside of what I do and looks at what else Frontier can offer, whether that be King's soil, uh, fertiliser seed. Russell is my eyes and ears on the ground because he will see James on a much regular basis than I do and he can feed me back information and also I can impart my information about markets to Russell. So what we will do is once the cropping has been decided, I'll talk to Rachel about what varieties are required, for, for example, on the cause contract, and then we'll make sure that James is growing the right varieties for that. We'll also ask Rachel's advice on which are the best end markets. James likes to grow a little bit of low-grade milling wheat, so Rachel will have an input on that. So I liaise with Rachel for, throughout the year. I make sure she has an up-to-date cropping because the cropping can change sometimes um, and I might pick up the odd sample for Rachel that's required because I'm, I'm here on the farm a bit more often, Rachel's based in the office. So we work very closely together. I do keep an eye on the market trends but Rachel you know, will um, either through emails or text or even ring me and say well look there's an opportunity here for selling um, which I perhaps hadn't appreciated and, and she'll keep me up to date with what's going on and then we make a decision on what when we're going to sell and, and how we sell. It's a joint decision at the end of the day. We all discuss and we, then we come together as a conclusion, but it's not one person telling the other what to do. We, we sort of bring it all together at the end. It works for everybody then. So about six years ago, I realised that we didn't have a demonstration site in this part of the world. We had many other sites, but this on the map, there was a, a dot missing. So James kindly agreed to become a demonstration site from Frontier and he's continued to do that for the last six years and he likes to look at the new varieties that are being grown in the demonstration site and a couple of years ago he introduced Siskin because he liked the look of Siskin in the demonstration site and then this last year we've introduced Shabras because the Shabras look very well in the pots. So then we work with Rachel to make sure that we've selected the correct varieties that are going to meet the end market. We also work with Richard Hales from Soil. More recently we've done some uh, soil mapping on part of the farm, um, trying to move into sort of more technology and we're now doing variable rate P and K on those fields and we're in our fourth year with Richard and we can now more accurately put down what inputs we think we need. We carry out the nutrient management service for, for James and Georgie. What that entails is soil sampling on one hectare grids across their fields. The results are then mapped and then we create recommendations for them. We just felt there's a lot of variability within fields. Using technology and the GPS and our fertiliser spinner, we can now put variable rate P and K on. But we're finding the last couple of years, having done that for probably four years now, the crops are becoming more even. And, and we know where there's deficiencies, we, we know where there's sort of surplus nutrients and we can more even them all out. Bringing the, 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 the yield data in alongside all the nutrient data, they can then look at areas, say, that are, are poorly performing, look at it against the nutrient data, etc. see is, is it one of the macronutrients that's actually causing the problem, is it something else, is it compaction? It gives them the ammunition to actually look at what is driving a problem or conversely what's giving the yield. We have got some little clay caps and we found some acidic areas there and it's also highlighted to us we've got some magnesium problems that we've been able to pick up on. So not only is it helping to even up the P and K, we're also picking up some problems that we perhaps hadn't detected. My relationship with Richard Hales has been quite important to have Richard's support 
uh, especially as James and Georgie have embraced the new technology. So obviously we've got two generations on the farm which works so well and I definitely have a bit more of a techie ethos. I just feel that technology is a tool that we should use to aid us in being more efficient. I've set them up this year actually with the iPad iSoil system for applying variably so the, the iPad is rigged up to their controller on their tractor. We can bring all the customer's information together. One point they can view it all, different nutrients, soil type data, yield data can be brought into it as well. And it's a one stop place to view and analyse all our information. Georgie and James are set up with iScout. Whenever they're out and about on the farm, you're always carrying your phone with you so they can get it out and scout any data that's going to be relevant to bringing into MySoil to use in future decisions. Russell will have access to their MySoil account so he can see what scouted data has been brought in to make agronomy decisions. The nice thing about MySoil is that it's very easy to use, it's very user friendly and it's obviously great that we have access to all the recommendations of applications just at your fingertips and then also that we can use that iPad in the tractor cab to then communicate with our equipment to do the variable rate. Georgie's interest on the farm is to make sure the business is fit for the future. So Georgie's very keen to embrace new technology so we're introducing My Farm onto the farm. My Farm is an app in which Russell can communicate what needs to be sprayed and then us on the farm can then say we've sprayed it, when and, and that kind of thing. More digital records definitely helps reduce the amount of paperwork in the office. I think looking forward what we as a business would like is to look at how My Farm can contribute to our benchmarking. So it's really important that we understand what our costs of production are moving forwards, especially as we're going to live in a volatile time, especially as we move towards Brexit. So by using the My Farm and recording what we've applied to each field and the operations of that field, we will then be able to monitor the cost of production and then understand which crops to grow in the future. We have been questioning whether to continue to grow winter barley because we've found out by benchmarking that actually the economics of winter barley are not as good as, say, spring barley or a second wheat. It's definitely something we see as a, going to be a big part of the future. I think it helps in maximising our efficiency and hopefully will improve our productivity as well. We enjoy working with, with Frontier. I think the professionalism that their, that their employees show and, and the sort of trusted relationships that we have with them um, makes the job more, more pleasurable. With, what with a dairy herd, a beef herd, um, various diversification and all of the combinable crops we grow. It's very difficult for, for Georgie and I to be a specialist in, in absolutely everything. So we need the expert advice from Russell and Rachel and Richard for growing the crops that we do.